So, uh, get a different angle. Like we were saying. Why don't you get a higher angle, Joe? Huh? Get it at a higher angle and angle in <clears throat> from high to low. Because the table, you're getting too much of the table. Okay. Yeah, why don't you do that, Joe? All right. Bring it up higher and then angle <clears throat> it. That's it. Up the okay. toys. Okay. All right. All right. It's rolling. <clears throat> we're on. Okay. We're on tape. You're back on tape. Oh, all right. Okay. So continue. Where were, Where were you? <laughs> to continue, we were saying that. Come on, Denise. You want to get out? Let's wanna go. Get out? All right. That's it. You're on camera. Okay. Ooh, smile as go by. Smile. Smile. Okay, we're on. All right. Okay. So anyway, <coughs> my th I think <coughs> the last question to you was George. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, know or recognize that Joel had the stamina and the ability and the perseverance of uh, being successful in whatever he did, whether it be music business or whatever? What did you recognize in him that, uh, that, uh, that you felt? I know what I felt and what I saw, but I'd like to get your viewpoint uh, because as an outsider, you, you know, looked at him at a, in a different angle. Well, as I, as, as I said, as we started to work together a little bit, after we had played a couple of jobs, and, and uh, then the next step was, well, if we're going to do this sort of thing with any kind of regularity, I guess we ought to practice or we ought to rehearse a little bit so at least we know what we're doing to some right. degree. Right. And in doing so, then all of a sudden, Joel's personality changed completely from the individual that I had experienced in the insurance business. He became very, very motivated, uh, uh, tremendous drive, and you know now he was the type of individual who was constantly pushing. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do more. <clears throat> he he wasn't satisfied easily. Whereas with the with the insurance business, uh, you know anything to get the job done, and that was that. Whereas with the music, uh, all of a sudden he became more the perfectionist. And I just he became more, he wanted things to be right. He wasn't satisfied until at one time we, 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 we would rehearse oh, two or three hours on one or two songs. It sounded right until the chords were right, until the background was right, until his phrasing was right. Doing this, I would say, over a period of maybe a, a few months, it became very apparent to me that the individual that I had in my office to learn the insurance business was not the same individual that we got to, that I got together with at home or in his home to rehearse with. His his approach w w was totally different, uh, and he was just a different individual. I have a like question, a Jekyll George. and Hyde personality. Did he come to you before he was with Equitable, or did he come to you after Equitable? I don't uh, remember. I don't remember when he was with Equitable, quite frankly. He was with Equitable about a year and a half. <clears throat> I don't recall whether it was before he came to your office. I would think it would have to be. be I would think it would have to be after, Afterwards? because. There was no year and a half separation from the time he got involved in the music business. Don't forget, after he got involved with us, in effect, he left the insurance business Entirely. within a period of six months. And yes, he worked through, so he worked his way out of the insurance business in a reasonably short period of time and be, and started to work at the music business full time. The reason I asked that question, George, is because when he was with Equitable, he was very, very successful selling life insurance. Uh, I know he didn't care for it too much, mm -hmm. but he was successful in selling life insurance. He made many, many friends around the community. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, people to this very day, strangers, stopped me on the street. How was Joel? How's your son Joel? And these were business people. These are not, not uh, relatives or people that I see every day. But <clears throat> these are strangers that I meet on the street that he's met before and that he sold insurance to and that have taken a liking to him. And he was just a natural for the business because he did well. But of course, I discovered later that he did not like the business. And but he was a great salesman. He got a great personality, and I knew he had the quality. But it was not something that he was satisfied in doing. And he was he was really leaning towards the music business. I think, I think that's the whole key. I though. think that was the key. The whole key is what you're saying, and, and really, I went through the same thing. Is Joel was a good salesman. Right. So was I. Yes. We both could sell anything under the If we're putting a sales situation, Harry, the natural sales ability comes out. You're very much the same way. Put a salesman in a sales situation and he'll sell regardless of what it is. That is correct. That doesn't mean he necessarily enjoys what he's doing. That's right. All right. 
my situation was the same. I like it, but, but I could a, sell it. But a salesman can sell a lot better if he likes the product that he sells. No question, no about, question about it. And that was the difference. And of course, the, the difference, difference is you then have to motivate yourself to go right. out and do it again. Right, right. We didn't have the motivation to go out and do it again. I didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. I had responsibilities. I didn't have much of a choice. Right. I had to put, you know, bread on the table and pay right. for the roof over my head. Right. He didn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. I knew at that point in time the reasons that I wound up in the situation that I was in. I knew why I was where I was. Mm -hmm. I knew why I was faced with the responsibility I was faced with. And what I saw in him was basically the same type of individual that I was in certain respects, but with one big difference. He had no ties. Yes. And he had ability. He had talent, a natural talent. Mm -hmm. And I felt that if he really had the drive, and he seemingly showed the determination, showed the drive. Like I say, when all of a sudden he was doing what he enjoyed, he was a different individual. He was now a very motivated individual. I mean, the eyes glowed, you know. Yeah. The sparkle was there. When he sat in my office, I was looking at a placid, dull, very uninteresting individual who did nothing but drive me up the wall, and all I did was figure out how the hell I could get rid of him. <laughs> uh, I mean, really, it was like night and day. There was, there was, and when I was talking to him about music, and we were going over the material or rehearsing, or that talking about going out and trying to get a job somewhere, within the time we drove up to the Catskills, we had a ball. I mean, yeah. this it was crazy. We didn't accomplish a hell of a lot, but yet, in a way, we did accomplish a great deal. Yeah because it was another step in a direction. Uh, and got, of course- It got him I, interested in music. That's of course. basically well, what Well, he was, was it, the about. interest was there all yeah. along. Nobody ever tried to bring it up. You see, and I guess the only advantage he had was to run across somebody who had made a big mistake, and that was me. I made a big mistake. I listened to my parents. And I don't mean that in a condescending way. Yeah. My parents had all good intentions for me, as you had. Well, Their intentions were only the best, only the best. They wanted me to be the best. But they didn't look at show business or the music business or the entertainment field as being something that represented to them worthy of achievements. That was to them something that was a, a game. It wasn't something you took seriously. They didn't see it as a serious business, as a business where you had to have the same skills, apply the same uh, motivation, apply the same drive, ambition, ability, as you would to be a doctor, a good lawyer, a good insurance man, or a good anything. And I have another question, George, now that you're reviewing everything, and we're reviewing Joel's life, so to speak. This is your life, Joel. Right. <laughs> we'll give you uh, the book. When you get it. Don't, you, don't, you think, don't you think it was a, a, a miracle I almost call it a miracle that he met up with Arnold Capanelli from Garfield and that Arnold sort of pushed him into the production end of the business rather than the entertain. In other words, he's behind the scenes rather than in front of the scene. And uh, that really brought him out because being a good salesman and a good promoter and, and ambitious as he was, uh, selling was really his forte. He is a good singer, no question about it, but there are thousands and thousands of good singers that never really make it singers as singers, you see. And I think Joel, if he remained as a singer, could have been just another singer, like all the other singers that Joel is trying to promote these days. And perhaps he wouldn't have the penthouse that he has today. He would do well, no question about it. He has an excellent voice, and he looks well. He makes a nice representation. But I don't think he would be making the money, and he would be quite as successful and big had he not gone into the production business, which I think was a turning point, a turning point in his life. In other words, he stayed with the music, but he took like in a different, a different direction of the music. And that was his turning point, when he went to New York City with those dimes in the phone booth and made those calls that he did selling Arnold's songs. And when he started selling songs, he realized that he was a better salesman, a better promoter, a better pusher than he really was as a singer, you see. Being a good singer today is not enough. You know, the competition out there in the field there are thousands of good singers, really good singers. And I'm just wondering, I mean, you know, I'm reflecting back now, had he remained as a singer, just a total singer, 
he would have been maybe lined up with a band or had his own band or maybe been a feature singer on some TV show or whatever. And then maybe another Barry Manilow. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Sorry, who knows? <laughs> he looks like Barry Manilow anyway. <laughs> but uh, who knows what he would be? But but that that would be a stroke of luck. Let but me the, make a comment on that. Yes. My comment on that is simply that I really think that George Meltzer conceived the baby. Okay. And George was really, uh, be it the sperm or the fertile egg, it doesn't matter. He was either or or both. Right. And if it wasn't an Arnold Capitanelli, it would have been to somebody else. I agree. Okay. Um, yes. But George was really the one that paved the road. Right. He was a trailblazer. Right. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm a bit of a fatalist by saying that Yes, Arnold came along, but it could have been somebody else to come along. Certainly, I ha if I have to blow my own horn, I'm a, I'm a salesman. But you, then again, you look at a Barry Manilow, right? Yeah. Or a Tony Orlando, or an Engelbert Humperdinck, yeah, for that matter. Anybody. Now, I stand with Engelbert. I've been all over the world with Engelbert. Yes. And I spend hours upon hours with Engelbert Humperdinck. And... I'm in a dressing room with him, and he's sitting there in a the dressing room, just like we're sitting here now, street clothes on, his hair all disheveled, wearing his glasses. He could walk down the street, nobody would even recognize him. And then I watch Engelbert Humperdinck perform a metamorphosis between a time I'm sitting there in a dressing room, and then I'm walking out on stage with him. And there Engelbert and I are standing maybe five to six inches from the audience that is absolutely chomping on the bit, foaming at the mouth, for, waiting for Engelbert to come out on that stage. And here I am standing there with him, and 10 minutes before, we were sitting in his dressing room, and all of a sudden, he looks different, he perks himself up, he could be as tired as could be in the dressing room, and this man is selling. <clears throat> for whatever Engelbert's shortcomings are, and we all have shortcomings, he is a wonderful salesman. Because he gets out on that stage and he sells. sells, song. He sells song. No, he doesn't sell a song. He what sells himself. Sell? He sells Engelbert yeah. Humperdinck. And the same with the Barry Manilow's, the Tony Orlando's, the Tom Jones's, Frank Sinatra's. So my feeling is, in June of 79, it's funny George should be here at this particular time because it's my first debut actually singing on an album. It's a second album cover, cover I've done, but it's also a transformation possibility in my life that 15 years ago, when George and I started together, and that was really the embryonic stage of my entire career, here we are 15 years later, and I'm faced with the decision that if my new album on Casablanca does take off, I am faced with the decision of actually going out on the road and fulfilling a lifelong dream or maybe a lifelong fantasy. And at this particular stage, nobody knows what's going to happen with the album. And the entire fate of my becoming a, quote, star and or coming out from behind the scenes is resting upon the success of this album. Certainly 95% of any of the records that come out, be it Aretha Franklin, James Brown, uh, Olivia Newton-John, John Travolta, anybody, 95% of the chance of success is that, a goose egg. However, like I caught Engelbert Humperdinck's After the Loving album, which sold a million five hundred thousand copies. I feel I'm with the best record company in the world, Casablanca. I feel the quality of the material, the quality of the entire album. And if this album does succeed, like a lot of people think it's going to, here we are again, 15 years later, and I'm talking within the next 60 days of this taping. Within the next 60 days, the die should be cast. And if this album takes off, it's going to be a very, very interesting, not only interesting, but a very important decision that I'll have to make. 
And at 36 years old, the decision is, do I come out from behind the scenes, which is a lifelong fantasy, and do what I've always wanted to do? And then I could be sitting here with George, with my father, five years from now, two years from now, and saying, look at that. Look at that trail. It started here, and I had to go around the back door to get here. Of course, whether or not this will ever happen, nobody knows. Joe, uh, Joe uh, does this record really do, uh, 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 do your voice justice? Uh, after all, you know, it's a, it's a disco record, as we know, and it's a very good record, incidentally. Uh, we both agree on that. Uh, and it, it should really be a moneymaker. But we don't even recognize your voice on the record. It, it really isn't Joel Diamond. It's somebody else. And uh, as we know Joel Diamond, as George knows Joel Diamond, Joel Diamond is a ballad singer. I think He's George a, has the answer to that. Uh, Joel Diamond is, has got a very nice melodic voice. At least uh, that's what I. So does Steve Lawrence, Jerry Vale. All right, Eddie but they're Vail. not. But, but they're not going to. All of which who don't sell too many records. They don't anymore. sell records, <laughs> right? They don't sell records, and disco records are selling today. So uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, is this going to do, as a, as a voice and as a singer? Is this is this the type of record Harry, you that you want to do? I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. I'm just asking. Well, I can't. I can't answer the question for Joel. Obviously, we, uh, is it the kind of record that you want to do? Yeah, I don't know. Is it the kind of stuff you want to do? I think I can. I answer think the. Other the, part of the I, question. No, I can answer that question very, very easily. Okay. The question is: Is this what I want to portray, as me, right. this sound? Right. And the only answer to that question, if I have a successful album. Is, is what I have done in the last 15 years indicative of where I want to be within the next two years? Does that make any sense to you? Well, yes, uh, I, I can read it. That's the same answer. I can read it. What I'm saying to you is that this record, if the man upstairs is good, <laughs> to me. There is nobody upstairs. We got the sky. Got the solarium. <laughs> uh, We're outside. It's beautiful out there. Incidentally. It is beautiful. It's beautiful. And if I if, if I have the success I'm really praying for with this album, the answer to your question is yes. And the reason being that it is a vehicle. Uh, and success breeds there. success. Right. And then we could look back hopefully two years from now, if I do come out from behind the camera, so to speak, yeah. and we could say the 15 years of struggling between Mercury Records, CBS, April Blackwood Music, leaving April Blackwood Music, taking a chance, starving, not having enough money in my, in my, in my checking account for next month's rent, which at that apartment was only $440 a month, and we look back and say, yes, that was the vehicle to my being able to be where I am today. And the answer to your question is yes. Because once you are successful, then you have everything in the palm of your hand. You can do anything and everything you ever wanted to do. And you feel as a singer you could make more money and be more successful than you could do, than you can as a producer, as I, a singer? I, I don't think, huh? I think you're going, you're going back to the old real estate and insurance bit again, Harry. I don't think it's a question of money. I really don't think it's a question. I don't think I don't think Joel stops to think about the money any more than I would doing the same thing well, or I'm even than I do in my own business today. You know, I learned I became successful in my business and I'm not nearly in successful in my business as he is in his, by the way. But I achieved, let's put it this way, a degree of success when I stopped thinking about money. I think that unfortunately but you, it's the name of you the game, yes it's and the you name represent of the game. a generation unfortunately right. that was brought up with the idea that money is the criteria by which you measure success I would have a tendency knowing what I know today and being 41 years old so I'm no longer a kid who's wet yeah. and green behind the ears anymore and right. I think I can with a certain amount of validity say that money is not necessarily the measuring rod with which you want to measure success. I measure success. Joel will be successful as a singer whether or not this record succeeds. Joel will be successful in the music business whether or not this record succeeds well, because Joel will not consider it a failure. No. 
Yeah. And that's the big difference between the man who's successful and the man who's a failure. You know, if you fail at something, one guy considers it a dr traumatic experience and has a terrible time recovering from it. Another person considers it as not a failure, but just a temporary setback. Joel, fortunately, like myself in many ways, is one of the temporary setback people. And I know you are too, by the way. I, I know that from your track record and from the years that I, that I worked around you and saw what you accomplished. And people like us don't consider failure as being failure. And the answer to your question is simply, if this record wasn't successful, he'd find something else to do. Oh, and if this no sound doesn't make it, it, he'll find another sound. No and whether it's Joel, it. what is Joel Diamond? What is anybody? What is, what, what, what's anyone who makes a record? It's whatever that record portrays. And once you've achieved a certain degree of, uh, uh, called fame, uh, a recognition, you can do any damn thing you want to do. Because once you're a recognizable personality, you make your 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 uh, you you make your situation as you as you choose to make it. You can change things as you go along, and people don't look at the changes. They say, "Well, that's Joel Diamond." They don't remember what happened a week ago. They don't remember what you sounded like a week ago. Yes, I remember what he sounded like 15 years ago. This was the last time I heard him. <laughs> but if I heard this for a week, I'd forget all about it, and that would be Joel Diamond today. And when I heard this, I'd say, "That's Joel Diamond." People only remember success; they never you remember see? failure. Yeah. And well, I believe true. that no matter what the situation is, and I think that he's he's living proof of it. I mean, nobody made Joel successful but Joel, let's face it. Oh, yeah. I mean, nobody made him successful oh, but Joel. yes, yes. I, I, mean, that, I know that, better than anyone. Well, I know I, obvious, than anyone. obviously you do. Yes. Other people, he had the good fortune of having people yeah. in his corner. Yeah. People who said, hey, you got the ability to do it, go out and do it. So occasionally, maybe when the few occasions or the few times came around when he needed a little moral support, a pat on the back, whatever, there was somebody around, and certainly you probably played a larger role in that than anyone. Well, I tried. Well, I tried. that was the most important thing. And except I think, the very beginning. Except at the very, very beginning. beginning. But, but even that wasn't got, long lived. Yeah, that's that right. wasn't long. When he really got started when in the music started, business, you were behind him. Yes, I was. And I yes, think I that was. that was the biggest, really, that was the biggest factor, other than his own drive, his own ability. I think the biggest factor in his success was you. He had his father behind him, and that makes a hell of a difference. It really does. To me, that's the biggest factor. But I don't think he'll ever be unsuccessful at anything because he doesn't know the meaning of the word unsuccessful or failure. Joel could sell pencils and be successful if he liked it. And if he didn't if, sell pencils, he'd say it's because there was no erasers on him, so he'd go out and sell erasers that's, instead. That's so what right. difference does it that make? He'd find right. something to do yes. that he would ultimately enjoyed, succeed at. If he enjoyed selling and pencils or erasers, he would be successful. I think that's the key, and you know? And that's why he's successful in the music business, because he enjoys what he's doing and he works hard at it. And it's not is, work when you enjoy and it. I, and well, I mean, he works hard. He works hard at what he's doing, and he's enjoying every minute of it. Mm -hmm. He's giving up other things, other things like his personal life, perhaps not being married, not having a family. But that, you know, that sometimes is not the most important thing in the world. Because if you're happy within yourself, if you're happy within yourself, you can have enjoyment in other people's families. And someday the right girl will come along, hopefully. Hopefully, someday the right girl will come along. And perhaps she'll have the family that he's looking for. He's trying to get you married off. No, no, no. He knows how I feel. He knows how I feel. He knows how I feel. And I've told him. That's what he feels. I, I've told him this before. It's a wound in my life. I've told him this before, and I'm telling him on camera that... Uh, I'm hopeless. <laughs> no, he's not hopeless. No, he is not. Joel's a very sensitive, he's a very sensitive boy, and he's very passionate. And I mean, I don't mean sexually passionate, but I'm passionate in his feelings but towards other people. And the fact, the fact that he looked you up, I mean, uh, he said it very nicely before, and I don't think I could say it as beautiful as he said it before, but the fact that he looked you up and made a personal effort, and it was an effort on his part to have you and your family up here for dinner, and he felt, he felt close to you. I mean, after all, really, you're strange. After nine years, you become strangers because you have your family and your business, but Joel still feels close to you because you gave him that kick in the pants, the kick in the pants from the very beginning. 
And for that reason, I'm very proud of him. I want you to know that. Well, I agree. I'm very proud of him. And I'm very proud because of him. Because he's, he's very sensitive and he's, he's got feelings, great feelings for people. And he hasn't become hardened in the business because this business can certainly make you hard. And he hasn't become hard. More importantly, he hasn't forgotten who he is. And he hasn't forgotten who he was. And that's important. Who he is and who he was, that's you right. see. And he hasn't forgotten the hard days either. And don't let it. I hope he never forgets the hard never days. Never will. No, never see? will. Because he had some awful hard days. Well, the good ones never do. Well, the good ones never do. I'm glad he went through the hard times. And he's sweating it out now a little bit, too. He's got a couple setbacks. I came up tonight, and he had a little setback. And he was just, like, drawn out. But uh, thank God he's pulled out of it. And tomorrow morning he'll wake up, and he'll be fine again. And like that's anything what, else, one thing with Joel. On his feet and, wind up, and like I say, whatever he tries to do, there's no doubt in my mind that he'll make it successful. One thing with Joel, he individual. bounces back. He bounces back and he does that great. He does that great. Oh, no, Other so. people would be sacked out and that would be the end of it, but not Joel. He bounces right back and he's right back in the, in the ring again and fighting mm -hmm. again. He's punching away. And he'll never, never <laughs> fail. Never fail. And I can say that for posterity, that Joel will always be successful. He'll always be successful because he's got a lot of perseverance, he has a feeling for people, and he'll just never quit. He'll never quit. And that's with that, I will sign off. And he's got a father who's in his corner 100%. Yes, thank you. That's important. <laughs> and I sure am. Joel, what can I say other than I, you have no idea how happy I am to be here, really, including my family. They're very happy to be here, too. And the only thing I can say is... I am tremendously, tremendously happy for your success. There's no animosity, never has been, never will be. The only thing I can say is one of these days, I still am going to get back into the music business. By hook, by hook. <laughs> this is something I want to do. However, now there's no illusions anymore. Right. One of these days, I'll get back into it as a hobby or something That's because right. I enjoy it. I enjoy people like you. Never stop enjoying I enjoy it, people who have the drive, the ambition, and, and who are creative who don't know the meaning of the word give up. And I guess maybe that's what you don't see in a lot of other things. And maybe that's what you do see in a lot of areas of show business, because the people that do make it, I think, have that one, maybe, maybe that one thing like in common, thing. you know? Mm -hmm. They don't give up, really. And I think we all see this. How about having uh, some of your children say a few No, things. what do they want to sure. say? Sure. Come on up here. Sit, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sit right. in my chair. Scott, say sit my chair. here with them. Sit over right. here. What do you want me to say? Say whatever you want to say. First of all, introduce yourself. What's your name? First? Hi, I'm Scott Meltzer. Really? How old really. Are you? I'm 11. Really? My birthday was the last past Monday. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> what class are you in? Um, got to stop and think about it. <laughs> six, I'll be in sixth grade. You like where you live now? Yes. Where do you live? Where do you live? I live in Beaufort, South Carolina. Oh my goodness. How'd you come yep. up here? By car. <laughs> you can come by plane. Right. Did you enjoy yeah. your trip? Yeah. You did enjoy your trip? Yeah. Ooh, that's good. That's good. And what did you have oh, well, All right, well, have go a ahead. We'll let okay, let's like Bozo talk. Tell you that. Why don't you introduce yourself? Go ahead. Hi, I'm Larry Meltzer. Speak up, speak up. And how old are you? I'm 12 years, years old. I live in Beaufort, South Carolina. I know, I know, I know. Well, okay. what, what are you doing now, up what here? You, yeah. What are you doing? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Well, well what, we came to visit Joel. Joel? Mm -hmm. Joel Diamond. I know, tonight you did. But yeah. I mean, basically, what did you come up with? Well, the we came up to uh, see colleges for Korea. Yeah, so what else did you do? Well, we went to. Came to Dominion. No, not that. Oh, all right. Um, yeah. did, did you uh, come to Natural Bridge. Natural Bridge. Yes. We asked, we came up to see our, we came to see our grandmother. Yes. No. Did you come up to an affair of some sort, a graduation or something? No, I graduated. Right. Oh yeah, in the family reunion, we family came up reunion. to that. I knew there was something else. Yes. Family reunion, right? Yeah, I forgot about and that one. Who did you meet there? Some of your family? Mm-hmm. Who, who did you meet? Your family, your cousins? Cousins, uncles, aunts. Oh. You haven't seen him for a long time? Well, not since the reunion. Uh, when did you see him last? The reunion? <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't know. I guess my grandmother's wedding. Oh, grandmother's wedding? 
Right. About the time she got married, right? Yeah, about the time she got married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second time, but it doesn't matter. Where's your grandmother live? Inglewood Coast, New Jersey. Where? Inglewood Coast, New Jersey. Okay, speak up. Speak up. All right, all right. We'll introduce your sister now. Yeah, this is Denise. Yeah, this is You have to get up now. Corinne, get over here. Go ahead. Now what? Oh, no. He's giving me time. Give me, just give me time. All right. <laughs> okay. 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 Now let's hear about you. My, my, na <laughs> my name is Denise Meltzer. I'll be a sophomore in high school next year. Um, <laughs> How old are you? I'll be I'll be 15 in October. <laughs> And what and else do you want to know? What school did you go to? Buford High School. Where'd you get the dimples, Denise? I was born with them. <laughs> what do you do in a restaurant? Oh, I make pizzas. You make pizzas? Most of the time. Well, my dad. Yeah. Right now, I, I like to flip them up in the air, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> this may sound dumb, but I tell everybody this. I can flip the pizza up in the air, turn around in a complete circle, and catch it. <laughs> Really? Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> that's about all I can do. I make sandwiches and yeah, ring up, you know, and take orders and that kind of stuff. Every kind that they have. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Corinne did too. Oh, Corinne did too. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, I see. Probably picking up on a lot. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to the regular mic. Okay, go on. Yeah, hi, I'm Corinne. Uh, we're, not, we're not using that mic, we're using this mic now. Well, you can put down that mic. Like talk a lot louder? Yep, yeah, talk a little, not much, but a little bit. Okay, I'm Corinne. I'm 16. And I think you heard everything else about anything. What? And um, I don't really have anything to say about family or anything, but I just want to say that it's been a pleasure to come to your house and everything, and we've always heard a lot about you and your father, and um, it's always been sort of like, like I said before, a fairy tale, and you know, a dream come true, someone's dream came true in life, and um, I just hope I can have the same thing if I ever find what I want to do, and um, just thank you for letting us come, and it's been really nice. <laughs> What do you do in the restaurant, Corinne? Same thing as Denise. I make sound. I don't. I can make pizzas, but I make sandwiches. What do you put in the pizzas? What are that? All those sorts of things? Yeah, everything. You know, what? whatever you want. No, no, we're not using no. the microphone. I know. Yeah. Okay. Um, just anything you want, pepperoni. Huh? What What sort of pizzas do we make? We have all kinds. We can cheese, pepperoni, mushroom, sausage, hamburger, just anything. Bell peppers, anchovies. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can get with the same thing, like get to whatever combination you want. You name it, we and with make. every, and then you, we make the sandwich the, the same way. Everything you got. <laughs> what do you sell to buy slices and uh, also? No, buy, we uh, sell it just by the pizza. Oh, the entire yeah. pizza? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you don't sell slices. No. no. I don't, you don't sell okay, pizza. We're back on mic again. Uh, we're back, back here back again. On mic. <laughs> All right. We got the noise, the sound that we got. What okay. Was what was it, Joe? I don't know. It's out now. Okay. All right. All right. So okay. that's. Do you like the restaurant business? It's all right, yeah. It's all just all right. Well, I don't know. It's, you know, get tired of it. It's been yeah. a couple of years now. You go to school? Yeah, I go to school. What class are you in? I'm in 11th grade. 11th grade. I'll, well, be, that, I'll be a senior next year. Senior next year. Uh -huh. And what are you going to major when you go to college? You know? I think business, but I'm not. It could change next week, you know. <laughs> it could always change. Like I said, I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. And so. where are you going tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yes. We're going Princeton. to Princeton. Princeton. Yeah. Yes. And Thursday? We're going to University of Pennsylvania. You're being interviewed there, are you yes, not? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I see. What uh, what sort of majoring are you going to take in those schools? A business administration? Yeah, business, I think. Business I, yeah, administration. Unless it changes. <laughs> I see. I mean, but that's what you're really lining up. Well, that liberal right arts now, kind yeah. of, you know, yeah. common, well, I know. very general. General courses. Yeah. Yeah. She really doesn't have any idea. And we're not really trying to push her in any direction. Yeah. Uh, I just think that she ought to get a, a good background for the first couple of years and then look around and, yeah. and see what yeah. she likes to do, you know. Well, good business is a background, isn't it? 
is always helpful. Right. No That's why I, I feel if she takes a little combination of be, combination of between a liberal arts or a business background, yeah. she can apply it to anything. If she wants to be a doctor, she can be a doctor. If she wants to be a uh, a, a salesman, yeah. you know, exactly. which which is fine. Yeah. She can she yeah. can go into sales. She can go into you, merchandising. As you, go through, sure. as you move along in college, you can then. She can more, yeah. yeah she can narrow do. it down as mm -hmm. she gets along, right? Yes. That's, that's, that's but good. Uh, that's who knows? Good. She might wind up in an insurance or real estate business. <laughs> who knows? It's a darn good feel. <laughs> or be a music producer. See, or be a music producer. Like we're missing one person in your life. Who? My wife. Mama. Come on. Come on. Okay. We we'll get the She's boss out here. All right. Get the boss out. Come on. Come on, we'll get you out here, too. Okay. Gotta get the water yeah, out. Okay. Oh, jeez. Let George and Pat sit down a little. Yep. Check your Corinne Renee, let me have your seat. Okay, everybody out of the way. Oh, no, no, no waving, no waving the cameras. I'll get the No waving the cameras. Okay. Everybody out of the way. See that? Now you're on camera. Now what camera. am I supposed to say? You're supposed to talk into the mailbox. Am I supposed Super to tell back. the story of my life? Huh? Hey, your name, your age. All right. You want to tell you want to tell Joe how talented you thought he was originally when you first met him? <laughs> I, I was against the whole thing. Against That's true. I against the whole. Time, right? He was. Well, you and her should have got together. He was. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> oh, whatever. He was totally monopolizing my husband. Oh, Joel was. And running him down the route of evil. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> now that I wasn't doing that age. <laughs> I started doing that a lot Here I was with four children with four messy drawers yeah. and some running noses and yeah. formulas. Yeah. And he was taking George out for whining and dining and singing and leaving me with the peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> that's, that's a riot. <laughs> and all the dirty diapers. Right. Yeah, so we really didn't get along. Uh, sounds good. Sounds good? <laughs> Okay, so how did we finally convince George to get out of what he was doing and uh, go into what he's doing now? <laughs> that was what, what finally happened? George convinced me. <laughs> he convinced you. Right. He was down in South Carolina yes. working for the Boulder Education. Oh. And he said, there is no place in this place to get a decent bite to eat. Yes. So he said, I think I am going to open up a food business. And I said, George, you're absolutely <laughs> out of your mind. And yes. he decided that that was what we were going to do. So for the first, we were so well financed. How did you get the financing? That's what I'm going to tell you. Okay, he I'm went and he borrowed or talked everybody into 90 day, you know, if they loaned it to him, <coughs> in 90 days he'd pay cash, cash, right? Yes. And we got all this, got down, we had $2,000, I think, was the total that we could get from a bank. And uh, we got to the day, a couple of days before we were going to open. He said, oh, my God, I didn't allow any money for food. Can Here we're going to open up a restaurant, and we had no money for food. Okay. So he went to the bank, and they loaned him the money for the food. And I went, believe it or not, to the local Department of Social Services right. and got enough money for food stamps really to feed the kids one for one month. Right. because." One month. We had no money. We month. had nothing. Well, we we had were had down to every zilch. Dime we had, we put in we, every dime was into the business. <coughs> had not done. Right. We were, that was it. The money we paid for the food for the put to put out for the customers. We that was no it. That was the end sales. of our money. So we went down to food stamps. So I went one. down and applied to social services for, for food month. stamps, yeah. for food stamps for one month, so that we could feed the kids, and hope to God it would go. And the, oh, Harry, you would have died laughing. We were both going to work this fantastic business. Yes. And we went to open up, remember? Mm -hmm. And the first day we were going to open up, of course, he puts Mama on the cash register, right? All right? And he's making the sandwiches. We did nothing but fight back and forth. Don't stand there. What are you doing? How much? <coughs> and the first customers came in, and I couldn't make change. They wanted to, and my hand just went like this. And I, <laughs> I was so nervous I couldn't make my hand just shook so bad that the man that eventually came to manage for us, Tom Cosmico, he said, "Please calm down. I'll get you anything you want." How'd you make the sandwiches? He was making the sandwiches. You know how to make a sandwich? No, but I was learning fast. <laughs> <laughs> how to make a sandwich? As the customers were ordering them, I was learning. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I, like I told you, you gotta have a little. What's that word? <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> Cook spot. He had a lot of that. That's the word. He had a lot of that. You gotta have a little. Oh, I'm sorry. And okay. All right. We got everybody. <clears throat> so we have turned this nothing investment into the livelihood of our family. Right, right. How's it now? How's it work? Better? Okay. So let's have some final words from uh, Pat and George. Pat and George. Okay. Final well, I words. Think, like, I think, fortunately, we can all say that at this point in our lives, we've all achieved a degree of success. We all hope to go a hell of a lot further. Amen. Of course. Amen. And Amen. Fortunately, Amen. Fortunately, we're all happy at what we're doing. I think I think we all have reached a certain point where we can all say that we're really happy with what we're doing, and we are. We enjoy where we live. We like it. We like what we're doing. Joel fortunately has found what he enjoys doing. He's achieved a, a tremendous amount of success, and I, I'm sure a great deal more will come. And Harry, you're retired, so yes. you got it better than all of us. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> and with that, I think we'll just conclude. Yes, and, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. I want so, you to know that with so. my lovely wife, who was just great. <laughs> when we left her, inside. and I can tell you, if it wasn't for her tonight, it would have been disastrous. <laughs> That's right. It would have been disastrous. <laughs> she bailed us all out. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Joel did not know that his girl was not capable. <laughs> unfortunately, well, and she pitched in, rolled up her sleeves, and she went into that kitchen. She took over, and we had ourselves a meal. <laughs> She's one heck of a nice lady. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think so. Too. Okay. We're very happy. So. All right. Okay. George. George. Da, 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 thank da, you for coming, and thank you for bringing your family. Yes, and we all enjoyed your family. I think you got a beautiful family. We'll have may to have you enjoy you, them we'll for many, have many you years. Down south in Buford, very much. Yes. Yes, I will. You all. I will. You all. Leading with our chins. This is where our story ends. Never lovers, ever friends. Goodbye, let our hearts call it a day. But before you walk away, I sincerely want to say I wish you bluebirds in the spring to give your heart a song to sing and then a kiss but more of this I wish you love and in July a lemonade My best, my very best, I